All right. All right. We're multitasking here. Multitasking. I'm going to attempt to keep the politics bar active. I don't have time to do it. But I think there's some people that want it to be active in my never-ending effort to please everybody except liberals and Democrats. I will attempt to keep the politics bar active. So my solution to this is I'm so damn out of shape, as some of you have pointed out on uh, my other videos. Um, which, oh, thanks, by the way. I've been wondering about that. You know, in real life, the only person that's ever called me fat to my face is my father. He calls me fat, I call him old, and then we're even. But no one ever else has the balls to do it to your face. But I guess the Internet's just a whole other thing, right? You know, people post all kinds of stuff under pseudonyms. You know, big dick, 17-8, you know, that type of thing. You know, it's like, wait a minute, if I go on the phone book, I'm pretty sure your name's not big dick, 17-8, something else. But, you know, anyway, I digress. We're going to try to get in shape here. So, while I'm getting in shape, I figure I might as well just talk into the phone. And we can maybe accomplish two things at one time. Talk politics and I get in shape. Believe it or not, I used to be in shape. Uh, that's kind of my goal is uh, I'd like to, well, I'd like to go fast again. You know, to rip off Ricky Bobby. I want to go fast. I used to go fast. Or faster than I go now, let's put it that way. So I'd like to run again, and to do so, I'm going to have to drop, oh, I would figure 70 pounds. I think I could do it. I think I can do it. People drive like assholes on this road, and the speed limit's 35. They drive upwards as 50, 60. I used to do that when I was a young asshole. I'm a little wiser now. I'm not 18 anymore. But we'll have to maximize our time. Anyway, I saw something interesting, I guess, on the conservative news internet, if you will. I guess Russ Diamond, Russ Diamond and Colonel Frank Ryan, they are state legislators from the state of Pennsylvania over in Lebanon County. And they have come up with numbers from the whole state. And basically they're saying on election night, I guess the state has some kind of portal that it counts the votes from the counties uh, as they're being uh, submitted. And that portal has a number of like 6.7 million votes. But then the final tally, of course, is 6.9 million votes. And they're saying, well, wait a minute now. These are the votes that should have been counted here, 6.7. You know, that should be everything. That should have been everything, because that's when you were supposed to stop counting. That's all the votes that you count. Where's this other 200,000 votes come from? And, you know, I'm... I'm I'm somewhat interested in what they're saying. And some of these numbers are numbers I've been to or been through um, in that, um, I think at least Diamond, he represents part of Berks County. And uh, I've, I've been through the nitty gritty of the Berks County numbers. My gut instinct tells me that the part of Shirley Wright in that I have no doubt that there were votes added down in Philadelphia and, and Allegheny County as well, Pittsburgh, after the fact. In other words, uh, blank ballots filled out after the fact for Biden and then just uh, linked to a non-voter after the fact. 
frankly 200,000. That feels about right, uh, the number. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, you know, in other words, I still aren't sure about that because, uh, you know, Diamond was showing numbers from his own district where uh, there's a handful of precincts where the numbers were inflated. In other words, at the end of uh, at the end of uh, eight o'clock on election night, the uh, numbers were a thousand, and then uh, uh, the final number was a thousand forty-four. Well, wait a minute. Where did these forty-four votes come from? What are these votes? Where'd they go? You know, why weren't they included in the original total? I, I sort of think part of the explanation is, is that, you know, you have hundreds of people involved in the calculation of these votes, over 67 counties, um, in some counties, multiple people in the county doing it. I think what you end up having is just some votes are just put in different categories incorrectly. And that leads to the numbers not matching up. So I kind of think that's what you're looking at there. That the, the numbers just don't match up because, it, it, you know, they just don't. <laughs> They're in the wrong baskets, some of them. This is the first time they've ever done this vote by mail nonsense. Hopefully it'll be the last. Well, I guess it won't be the last because... The Pennsylvania Republicans did this. They're the ones that instituted this. Which kind of gets to my larger point. I'm not interested really at this point. I mean, I've given up. Look, I think it's become clear that no court is going to step in here and declare Donald Trump the winner. It's not going to happen. I knew that from the get-go. I know it more now. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, Joe Biden's going to be inaugurated. That's going to happen. Uh, where do we go forward from here? Well, we just simply have to play under the same rules as the Democrats. Um, if the Democrats are coming up with 95% turnout in the blue parts of whatever state, the Republicans need to do the same, whatever that takes. You know, if it means um, people... Uh, are voting, quote, voting, three days after the election, well, then that's, what, that's what's going to happen. You know, uh, it's not a foul if the ref doesn't blow the whistle. And nobody blew any whistles in this election, so politics ain't beanbag. It's all legal. So the judges, by their inaction, have declared it all legal. So... And the Democrats, to their, you know, I don't know if you want to call it credit, they knew it already. You know, they knew they could get away with murder and nobody would do anything. So the Republicans need to fight fire with fire. And I actually think they will to some degree. Uh, remember, I, was it two cycles ago? Was it the 18 cycle or the 16 cycle? You heard about all this, uh, how the Democrats won every last contested seat in California, in the in the House, every last one because of ballot harvesting, they just went out and brought home bags full of ballots long after the polls closed, and lo and behold, they won every last contested seat. Well, you didn't hear about it this cycle. Why? Because Republicans have learned how to do the exact same thing. So that's what I think will happen going forward. Uh, I did see one thing I thought was interesting. Russ Diamond, again, state legislator from Lebanon County. You know, this guy's a real hero, the more I think about it. He's one of those guys that the party itself, the Republican Party itself, they laugh at this guy. They think he's, you know, a clown, a fool, uh, uh, you know, a guy that... What he really is is a guy that actually believes his own bullshit. You know, when he talks about liberty, he actually believes that. Uh, for me, that's the kind of legislator I want. He and some others, I believe, have got a constitutional amendment that they're putting out, which is going to, for lack of a better word, pack the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, or at least 
redo it in such a way that it's going to guarantee a certain number of Republican seats and a certain number of Democrat seats. The constitutional amendment would prospectively go before the voters in uh, May of 21, the uh, primary election in 21. I believe the, the, there's seven, seven Supreme Court judges now in Pennsylvania. Five of them are hardcore leftists. Um, just because, well, the Democrats spent a fortune on one of these judicial elections. The Republicans were asleep at the switch. And boom, you know, they elected five out of seven. Uh, and as they've demonstrated... They're going to vote right down the line with whatever Tom Wolf wants them to do. If whatever Tom, uh, whatever Tommy the commie wants them to do, they're going to back it. So the idea behind the constitutional amendment is that I believe the justices will have to be located in certain geographical areas. In other words, you're not going to be allowed to have five out of the seven justices from Philadelphia because that leaves the rest of us unrepresented basically if, you know, justice for Philadelphia he didn't know the first guy to even think about Birch County so I like it why not I mean you know I think all whatever you want to call it good governance uh, that's out the window here you know this is fight fire with fire time I don't think hell the like I said these guys they've made it pretty clear they want to pack the United States Supreme Court so you know should we wait for them to fire first I don't know we better start thinking about how we're going to fight them though I don't know these people they're one of the few Biden voters in the area I've noted they keep their sign up no one's damaged it yet. No one's stolen it. But there it is. Oh. I'm already out of breath. We haven't even walked a mile. What else is on the agenda here? Uh, I'm going to shut the phone off while I think. One thing I wanted to say here about the pandemic, the lockdowns. Dave Portnoy, he is the man that runs a media sports website called Barstool Sports. Uh, he's uh, started a fund from his people where they're giving money to the fund, which is then being uh, distributed to bars, small businesses, bowling alleys. Uh, businesses that have applied to Barstool for help. Uh, because, well, these lockdowns are wiping people out. And I think this is a great thing that he's using his platform to help out some of these small businesses. I saw a tweet from him, which I thought was great, that the amount of money that's been contributed to these uh, small businesses, uh, the Winklevi... That's a term from, I believe, a movie called The Social Network, I think. Uh, it's uh, Cameron, oh, and I forget his brother's name, Winklevoss. They were, they were involved in the beginning of Facebook. Uh, they were the ones that had the Facebook project that did not get, did not get off the ground. Well, at any rate, they're billionaires. Uh, they're they're on, you know, on the ground floor of Bitcoin, although I couldn't tell you in what fashion. At any rate, they've given uh, $200,000 to the Barstool Fund. He pointed out that these other tech billionaires like uh, Dorsey, uh, Zuckerberg, they've given nothing. So, and they're not going to give anything either. Because these tech billionaires give a shit about small business. So, Portnoy knows what it's like to be a small businessman. So, kudos to him. Uh, 
and I'll probably give contribute to this fund as well. Now, I, I had a larger point on that. We need a similar fund, and I don't know, you know, everybody's going to say, well, you know, you start it, you run it. I'm making a video while I'm exercising, for Christ's sakes. I don't have time, basically, to take a dump. But the fund, we need people to start contributing to a fund that think the same way, that this lockdown crap is just that crap. These mask manda mandates are idiocy. So when a business says, you know what, I'm not just going to sit here and go out of the business while well, I hope Dave Portnoy comes by and gives me some money, I'm going to open and the government can go to hell because we're just about done and everything I've worked years for, busted my ass 70, 80 hours a week, is about to go up in smoke. And I'm going to have to sell my house because we're out of money and the bank is at the door. Someone needs to help those people. So my idea is we need a fund to help those people that are giving the finger to the government. And these people are true heroes because they're really the ones that are taking the chance. If the government turns its sights on you... There's really no limit to the amount of damage they can cause to you. They can literally kill you and do so in a legal fashion with no repercussions to them. You have to support these people that are supporting us by saying these lockdowns are bullshit. So my idea is people contribute to a fund and that money goes to lawyers and such to defend these restaurants and bars and gyms and bowling alleys and yoga studios and anybody else that's been unfairly targeted by these stupid lockdowns. I know the virus isn't going away in any of these heavily locked down states, you know. You don't need to be a scientist to know these lockdowns simply don't work. The virus is way too communicable. And to those people like Bill Gates, was it him? It was another giant hedge fund guy. I forget which. His idea was lock it down hard. I mean, in other words, nobody leaves their house. That wouldn't work either. It just wouldn't. What they should be doing is simply assembly line, punching people in the arms as fast as possible. But they're not doing that either. They're performing or proceeding in an orderly, slow governmental process. You know, meanwhile, you know, business are dying, people are dying, but the government, you know, they just don't give a shit. You know, it's, the virus just simply isn't that interesting to them. In other words, why, instead of, I think of the number I saw was 300,000 a week that have been inoculated, should be 10 times that, 3 million a week. Do it already. Why are you waiting? What is taking so goddamn long? Do it. But they'll drag their feet because it advantages them to do that. I shut the video off when I have to spit. I think you're just going to have to get used to that. That's just something. If I'm exercising, guess what? You know, you're going to not have a exactly clean crisp audio you're gonna have me panning and huffing and puffing so I don't apologize all right what else is going on I guess uh, I haven't really paid attention to these Georgia Senate elections uh, 
the few people I've talked to just are assuming the Republicans will lose. I'm not so sure. Uh, I think that... I don't even know who's running against who. I, I'm more familiar with the Democrats than I am the Republicans. Um, they have the uh, African-American, anti-American preacher. And then they have, I guess, the young businessman whose business is, I guess, mostly funded by the Chinese. And both of their candidacies are, has, was Biden or funded by the tech oligarchs and the coasts, the financiers, the tech billionaires. So I think probably uh, the African-American preacher, I think, will lose. I think he's just, I mean, everything I know about political science tells me that guy's way too far left to be elected in a state like Georgia. Uh, but, you know, it's possible. It is possible that the rules are all different now. And Republicans never will win again because of just out and out, outright fraud and theft. I said that the Republicans have to fight fire with fire. Well, it's probably one month. It's not nearly enough time to get that kind of uh, fraud apparatus up and running. You know, the Democrats, they have years of practice at it. So there's no way the Republicans are going to be able to match that in one month. So the only way that they're going to beat Raphael What's-His-Name uh, is they'll have to turn out and beat him 57-43, which they may do. You know, I, I can't imagine that even the most middle-of-the-road people from Georgia are going to look at that guy and go, gee, that's my candidate. You know, only the hard leftists, the Marxists, African-Americans, of course. You know, I get it. Uh, some of those guys will vote for the black guy just because he looks like them. Um, uh, maybe I'll start doing the same thing. Hey, there's a white guy. I'll vote for him. You know, I don't really think that way. Yeah, but I usually look at what I think the candidate's going to do, not skin color. But we'll see. That's kind of the one that's going to determine whether we're in really interesting times or we're just kind of back to 2008, 2009. I'd just as soon just go back to 2009 rather than live in really interesting times. But that would mean the Democrats have control of all levers of the federal government. And, well, then Katie barred the door. And we'll see what happens. That'll be ugly. Oh. Well, it dropped the phone, so it appears to be functional. Did not crack the screen. I saw a GoPro. All right, let me rephrase. My wife quoted a GoPro price, GoPro, at $500. They've got to be cheaper GoPros than that. So I'm thinking maybe that's the way to go. Is, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do these GoPros, they have like a button where you can turn them on and off, or they just run? And then you gotta edit the film. You know, I end up with 50 meg, I'm sorry, 50 gig of, uh, footage. That's gonna take four hours to edit. So, I haven't figured out the solution yet this may be the first and only time we do this um, I'm sure one of my neighbors at some point is going to come out and see me talking to myself and say what the hell what are you doing or, or worse yet see me with the camera and go I didn't give you permission to fill my house I can see that but I don't know. I guess I, I guess what we'll have to do to avoid those problems is just go down to the trail. The trail's public property. I can film on the trail with nobody bothering me. 
can do that. It's just quick and dirty to walk out my driveway and walk on the road. <laughs> so, I haven't solved that issue yet. I think I may have finally solved my slow upload problem. Uh, compression, I think, is the answer. There are programs out there that will compress a video file. The one I've been using at least twice is called Hand break. I don't know where these names come from because the term handbrake has absolutely nothing to do with compressing things to me. But that's the name of it. And basically it takes a video file that's, you know, say 1.5 gig that YouTube will take six hours to upload. Um, and it pushes it together. And roughly you come out with something that's maybe five, six, seven hundred uh, meg, which generally I've been getting those uploaded now in an hour. They were going faster. I don't know what if YouTube has simply made a behind the scenes switch. Uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me where, you know, they can do whatever they want and they don't have to explain it. Let's dodge the mailman here. Mailman has a new vehicle. How about that? I guess the mailman was a woman, so I violated gender pronoun law. Come get me, Twitter. But, yeah, so handbrake seems to be helping me in that uh, I'm saving an hour or two in uploading these videos. So hopefully that will continue. Now we're about at the end of the road here for video one of Eric's exercise political rant, whatever the hell. Uh, I have to work on a better title than that, I guess. Uh, so we'll see. This might be a one-off deal. On the other hand, this could be the start of a series. Because, you know, I'm so far overweight and to even remotely get where I want to go, it's going to take serious effort. Serious effort means every day. So... You people begging for political barn content, you may get more than you bargained for. You might get daily, daily griping, daily, daily whatever, pontificating. That's a good word. I like that one. All right, signing off. We'll see you. I don't know when we'll see you again. I may invest it. Eh, day's already short. I don't know. I was up till four in the morning. I don't know. Day's already getting away from me. I'd like to know how the GoPros work.